हेलो माय डियर वॉरियर्स हेलो ए सिंग भाग गौतम लेनिन शाह आकाश तेजस्वी मिर जीवी हेलो हेलो मंगेश हेलो रवि कुमार हेलो सिकाराम गुड इवनिंग माय डियर वॉरियर्स द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ योर मोस्ट अवेटेड एलाइड क्रैश कोर्स इज लाइफ फाइनली फॉर ऑल द नीड एस्पिरेंट्स बीट अ ड्रॉपर और बीट अ ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड स्टूडेंट एंड दिस सीरीज एम्स फॉर ओनली दो सीरियस एस्पिरेंट्स हु वॉन्ट टू बिकम अ डॉक्टर who want to crack the need examination this attempt only i don't want to wait any longer guys this is the ultimate crash course so let me just give you a brief of what exactly i'm going to do so that because you know when the days come and when you see the lectures you should not get confused see i'm going to start with high weightage topics like modern physics is very high weightage very important not just for need but also for your boards number 1 number 2 there will be theory centric sessions like this one today and there will be problem centric sessions also today session also has problems but we are going to concentrate more on learning that theory applying it in the problems and learning the concepts and also all the important formulas and all the basics so i'm going to go from the basics and i'm going to make you a hero so in these theory classes you are going to start from the basic level that's number 1 in the problem solving session i expect you to watch these theory sessions and come prepared for the problem solving sessions is that clear my dear students okay so today's session is a theory oriented session there will be few problems just to keep you on track just so that you don't lose focus and just so that you stay warmed up and you understand the basics that's all very simple trust me on that so this one shot is on dual nature of matter and photoelectric effect we are going to start with photons its properties we'll go to de broglie wavelength and problems on that and then of course we'll end the lecture with photoelectric experiment and all the graphs as well great nice to know that all of you are aligned with this those of you who do not know me my name is stress you can also quickly introduce yourself make new friends this channel is now finally reactivated and trust me i was very eager to take sessions on the j english channel as well as the neat english channel so already i am teaching on j english now here i am on the neat english channel for all the students who want to learn in english medium and crack the neat examination so i have been training kids for a very long time and i am very proud to say that and i am very happy that you guys too are going to do extremely well under my mentorship okay so let's begin the class and uh, let me also tell you for those students who had missed the previous uh, lecture uh, last lecture i had uh, given you the strategy for studying physics please watch this lecture it's a beautiful lecture thank you for all the uh, love and the support that you have shown by liking it thank you so much make sure you watch that strategy session and uh, whatever you feel like asking you can please ask me in the comment section as well thank you for giving such tremendous response on that session as well so let's begin guys thank you very much guys thank you for lighting up and keep the chat box warm and keep answering keep asking keep helping and make sure you stay active not just today not just now but for every lecture that is going to go on this channel and you guys have already made that promise when i conducted the previous session so all right so i'm just reminding you of that so let's begin now understand that there are people with multiple personality disorder you might have seen many movies on that right so some person suddenly is very very nice suddenly he becomes very cranky there was a very famous movie i remember called as aparichit i am not sure if you have seen that hai na atomic physics will be done after this uh is in this class scheduled at 9 no it is scheduled at 5 o'clock yes this is is this the regular time for the lecture sandhya well actually there will be some days where i'll be taking at 5 o'clock but usually i'll be taking at 9 o'clock so it depends 5 o'clock or 9 o'clock these are my two timings on which i'll be coming on this channel not 7 o'clock not 3 o'clock or anything 5 and 9 and in advance only i will notify in the telegram channel not like instantaneously i'll tell you listen tomorrow or today i'm taking the class 2 3 days at least minimum i'll tell you and right now you know the plan i'm going to start with modern physics then i'll go to other chapters okay i'll keep you guys posted i hope this is clear i hope susmita and others they are clear okay now now the thing is 
जस्ट लाइक पीपल हैव मल्टीपल पर्सनैलिटी डिसऑर्डर इवन इवन एटोमिक पार्टिकल हैव मल्टीपल पर्सनैलिटी डिसऑर्डर इवन लाइट हैज मल्टीपल पर्सनैलिटी डिसऑर्डर लाइक एवरीबडी माइट हैव हर्ड दैट लाइट हैज ड्यूअल नेचर समटाइम्स इट बिहेव लाइक अ वेव समटाइम्स इट बिहेव लाइक अ पार्टिकल Now, what do I really mean by that? Because only then you will be able to understand the concept. So let's understand what is this dual personality disorder. I hope you have smashed the like button. Just reminding you of that. Now, see, particle means it has you know momentum. It has you know some impulsive force when it hits something. It can collide with things. I'm pretty sure you are made of particles. You can hit somebody. You can feel that something. All right. You have momentum when you move. correct so you have particle like behavior wave like behavior will be things like imagine when you create ripples on water or when you talk sound waves are going that's a wave even light goes like a wave you might have heard this the light from the sun comes or reaches the earth in the form of electromagnetic waves it travels in that empty space and the energy reaches the earth in the form of a wave so the ripples on water is also a wave where the medium stays as it is only the energy goes from the source to the destination in particle in particle they can interact with other matter they have momentum and they can collide all these things happen in particle behavior correct yes the telegram link is there in the description box so yes wave behavior they can interfere waves can interfere you might have heard like when two people are talking both their sounds are heard and in a noisy class teacher would be always saying hey stop talking stop making noise etc etc everybody is making noise all their waves interfere so even light waves can interfere with each other they can produce constructive interference that means their crests meet together to produce bigger crests or destructive interference that means crest meets with trough to cancel out each other correct okay now now what happens is guys that when waves can interfere they can also undergo many other such phenomena you might have heard about words like diffraction refraction right how many of you have heard this yes is this enough for need definitely bachcha concentrate on the class guys concentrate on the class yes yep yes 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 loan ji what is your comment you can ask me rap uh later on also but right now i would want you to concentrate on the class as well yes you would have heard all these phenomena so these are associated these are the traits these are the symptoms of waves just like when you treat a patient you will ask symptoms oh you have fever okay you have cold you have temperature that means you have this okay you have this you have that that means you have this so if something is diagnosed with waves it will have characteristics like interference refraction etc if something has particle like behavior it will have momentum it will interact it will collide and all such other things i hope this is clear now it has been found that light can undergo and show both kinds of properties in different experimental setups light can interfere so yes wave light can also provide momentum so particle so light has dual nature what does light have dual personality so dual nature in some experiments it shows this in some experiments it shows other type of behavior hence it is said to have dual nature i am hoping you understood it till here great so let's see if you can arrange these characteristics into different parts which of the following are particle characteristics which of the following are wave characteristics just look at these look at these terms and from your prior knowledge or just by common sense try to rearrange them yes come on mtg fingertips plus pyq enough for 150 uh, warren squares please watch my previous session the strategy one there have mentioned which books and the strategy to be uh, used for 150 plus so just those books will not help you let me tell you that okay so sandhya saying cef and uh, prem saying ace saying particle okay momentum is wave ah uh, really food news think again okay wave is bdf saying gokul jay shakti saying ac is particle ac is particle bdf is wave interesting interesting many people sticking to some similar kinds of answers come on lock your answers guys be true to yourself 
can we score 100 plus if we start from now scratch yes you won that is the whole aim that's why i conducted the strategy session gave you a plan i told you how you can get 150 plus with proper timetable with proper technique now you have to attend these classes only these classes and the strategy that i have given if you follow that you will get 150 plus in physics that means 600 plus in need examination all right so let's have a look at whether you guys are correct or whether you guys are wrong the correct answer to this question is wave parameters will be diffraction diffraction is a parameter or a characteristic of a wave diffraction is basically a property those of you who do not know it don't worry don't worry about it diffraction is basically nothing but bending of light bending of a wave bending of a wave around a corner the light spreads it bends that is called as diffraction it can only happen with waves interference constructive destructive only with waves refraction again this is also bending of light but not because of corners or anything but when the medium changes this is bending of wave around corners around corners or basically holes or apertures this is basically bending when the medium changes this is when the medium changes that's when refraction occurs whereas momentum obviously momentum is mass into velocity mass is particle behavior impulse will happen only when impulse remember guys impulse is change in the momentum change in the momentum obviously with particle collision particles collide they do not interfere particles will collide and momentum is conserved so all these are particle behaviors very good good evening sana ji good evening everyone very good excellent so a c e is particle b d f many of you said this b d f is wave so b d f is wave a c e is nothing but your particle so that's how it works all right great now that you know now that you know what is the clear distinction between wave and particle proud of you guys keep it up and looks like some of you have already lit the chat box because you are feeling great about getting the correct answer very good keep this up now the next thing is what is the particle of light called what is the particle of light called the wave of light is called electromagnetic wave there is a separate chapter in 12th standard have you heard of it light wave is electromagnetic the particle of light is called photon again i'll repeat what is the particle of light called photon the wave of light is an electromagnetic wave very good you guys know the name so what is a photon if i talk about it light light you know the wave nature the wave nature of it is electromagnetic wave the particle nature the particle nature is nothing but called as a photon now what is this photon has anybody seen a photon the answer to that is no is photon a sphere no nobody knows how a photon looks like but i can sense a photon when it falls on the retina of my eye your eyes can sense photons when it falls you you are able to see everything around you correct now this photon is a carrier of energy every day you might be getting milk packets at home correct so there is a milkman who comes and gives okay this is a packet of milk okay there is a packet of milk okay here is next packet of milk every day you get it correct guys all right correct but it's not like it's not like you know there is a stream or there is a canal of milk and that milk is slowly entering into your house okay let me just open the tap and let me just take the milk no it's not like that right you get packets of milk exactly like that exactly the same way energy of light also travels in packets energy of light also travels in packets very good loan packets of energy correct so every photon has a fixed energy it has a fixed amount of energy and energy of light does not travel continuously like a flowing river like a river which is flowing water is flowing continuously whereas you pack it and pack it into bottles or pouches then it is a packet of water or a pouch of water or a bottle of water so energy of light goes in packets very good very good 
Now, the next point that you should know is that these packets of energy differ in size. Some packets are small, some packets are large. Some packets are small, some packets are large. Can you guys tell me what would the size of the energy packet depend on? Come on, let's see how many of you can do this. Come on. Tell me this guys. Shiva, this is neat English channel, bacha. Alright. The difference between proton and photon. Very good, Prem Kumar. Proton is in the nucleus. It's a particle. Correct? It's also a particle. It's in the center of the nucleus. It has mass. It can be seen. It is like a decently sized particle inside the nucleus. And it has positive charge. Photon does not have charge. Photon does not have charge. You cannot, you know, see that photon so easily. At least, you know, there are no experiments as of now to see that photon. I hope this is clear. So photon is chargeless, mass is also not there. But proton has a mass, it has a charge, it is in the nucleus. It's quite considerable in size. Yes, it depends on frequency. Very good, Madhumita. Very good, Tejashwini. Who all have told that? Prem Kumar, yes, not quanta, but it has a fixed amount of frequency. Yes, definitely. So each, each photon, which is a packet of energy, the energy packets size depends on the frequency big frequency big energy packet small frequency small packet of energy big packet big frequency small packet small frequency that's what it is also with what speed does this packet travel with what speed do these packets of energy travel obviously it's light it will travel at the speed of light only and how fast is light 3 lakh kilometers per second which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second that's the speed of light so these energy packets travel really really fast at 3 lakh kilometers per second and it is independent of the frame meaning whether you sit on earth or whether you sit on the boiling sun or whether you sit on jupiter or you are in a lift you always see these packets traveling at the same speed very good they travel at the same speed satya prakash you can read the satya ritika you can see the title this is basically modern physics chapter one you are Wave particle duality, photons, photoelectric effect. Very nice. Independent of the medium? No. It depends on the medium. It alone, it depends on the medium. So if you change the medium, obviously the speed of light will change. It depends on the refractive index. So speed of light in any medium, speed of light in any medium will be speed of light in vacuum. Speed of light in vacuum upon mu. What is this mu called, my dear warriors? What is this mu called, my dear warriors? It's called as the refractive index. It is called as the refractive index. Correct? -o? Amazing? -o? Let's go ahead then. The energy of a photon. Now, photon is nothing but your energy packet. It's nothing but your energy packet. This packet of energy is also called as the quanta. Quanta of energy. Like when you have some money in the wallet, each coin or each note is a quanta of money. This quantity, a sm the smallest number of that quantity is the quanta of energy. So this energy packet is also called as the quanta of energy or the packet of energy. That packet or that quanta or that minimum value of that energy which is there with each and every photon or each and every packet is given by is given by energy of a photon is given by nothing but h into f you can see very clearly if the frequency increases energy increases if frequency decreases energy decreases correct great this h is nothing but called as your planck's constant this is called as your planck's constant the value of that is approximately 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 in SI units. In SI units. That's MKS units. Right? Very good. But we all know that speed of light is also related to the wavelength and frequency. How? Observe. Guys, I hope you know speed of light is also frequency into wavelength. Frequency into wavelength. This is basically one wavelength. This is basically one wavelength from here to here is a wave this is a wavelength speed of light is frequency into wavelength everybody agrees with this so can i say frequency is c by lambda frequency is c by lambda 
सो कैन आई नॉट से दिस इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू दिस इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू सी बाय लैमडा इन टू एच सो एच सी बाय लैमडा दिस बिकम्स योर कंप्लीट फॉर्मूला दिस बिकम्स योर कंप्लीट फॉर्मूला सो लेट मी जस्ट ब्लॉक दिस ऑफ let me just block this off energy of a photon is h into frequency which is planck's constant into frequency or planck's constant into speed of light divided by wavelength of the light now if you are asked you to calculate now you will be like sir it is so boring to calculate h 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 wavelength in some other unit it's difficult na no? i think there is a easy way to calculate it and you can use this calculation shortcut for avoiding complicated calculations what is that calculation trick here is the trick guys the energy of the photon usually is very small and is not generally expressed in joules instead you use a smaller unit called as electron volt and when you use that unit instead all these terms constants is already calculated for you you just remember this number 1240 One two four zero, and then here you put a lambda. This lambda, if it is in nanometers, then the answer for this energy will be in electron volt. If you do not have lambda in nanometers, but you have lambda in angstroms, angstroms, then you put one two four double zero, and then it is electron volt. Either this or this. If this is in angstrom, one extra zero. If it is in nanometer, then no extra zero. apart from that exactly loan exactly everyone very good so this is a shortcut trick most of the times in neat exam or any other exam you will see lambda will get cancelled with 124 so most of the times you will see it will be like a multiple or divisible with this 124 so you will see some easy calculations many times so this is a small trick which you should know great so now we have learned about quanta the energy speed of light how is it related to wavelength and what is the formula of energies uh, of a photon great moving ahead to some more properties of a photon somebody was just asking me somebody was one uh, uh, yes the value of hsc in electron volt kausika is 1240 not h into c h into c is value is not 1240 hc is in joules converted into electron volt then it is 1240 okay yes shiva kumar but i am not taking a big chapter so that everything looks confusing i am taking small small parts of big unit like modern physics so i am teaching a part of modern physics today which is wave particle duality you can see the title i mean okay great now the next point is somebody was asking what is the difference between proton and photon so guys quickly you should be able to tell me that photon does it have positive charge negative charge or is it neutral does it have positive charge negative charge or is it neutral come on put it up in the chat box spam the chat box guys is photon not proton photon spelling is very similar r is there in proton that's it so photon or is neutral positive or negative obviously it is neutral then you will be like sir what is the difference between neutron and photon What is the difference between neutron and photon? Hmm. Neutron is also chargeless. Photon is also chargeless. Then what's the difference? What's the no mass, no charge? Very good, Ashika. See, very good. Conversion between joules and electron volt. Yes, I'll come to it. One second, Prem Kumar. Let me just finish the slide and then remind me. Okay. So. guys neutron has a decent amount of mass compared to the atomic scale but photon is massless there is no mass associated with it so that's why you will see that the rest mass of the photon is assumed to be zero very very crucial the rest mass is assumed to be zero for a photon photons are neutral very very important and they are stable it's not like a photon will break it will explode it will create some crazy amount of explosion no and because it is chargeless because it is massless hence it will not even get deflected even if you apply electric field or magnetic field only charges get affected by electric or magnetic field no mass no charge and it is stable i hope this is clear very good somebody was asking sir what is the conversion factor from electron volt to you know joules so my dear students if you want to convert electron volt into joules this is the conversion factor 
वन इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट इज बेसिकली नथिंग बट वन इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज वॉट इज द चार्ज ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन वन पॉइंट सिक्स वन पॉइंट सिक्स इन टू टेन टू दावर माइनस नाइनटीन राइट सो इंस्टेड ऑफ ई जस्ट पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ ई दैट इट दैट इज इन जूल्स सो दिस इज यूजली द कन्वर्जन फैक्टर दैट यू गोइंग टू स्टिक टू I hope this is clear. So one electron volt is these many joules. So one joule will be take the number on the other side that many electron volts. I hope that is fine, Prem Kumar. Great, great. Now is rest mass and normal mass same? No, rest mass and normal mass is completely different. Now understand, a normal mass might be the mass when it is in motion. Rest mass is when it is actually at rest relative to you. So a normal mass when something is moving. will be slightly different now why is it different that comes in a separate class or you can say separate branch altogether that is relative mechanics which was given by einstein let's not go there okay you have to stick to neat level correct so guys just understand that the mass also can change if speed changes that's a crazy different theory given by relativity einstein's theory you can definitely read up on it when you are done with the neat exam now i know you will be very fascinated you will be like sir teach about black holes sir teach about relativity yes it's not even there in the syllabus sir but it is fun yes it is fun but do you have time you please tell me that so focus on the syllabus okay momentum of the photon is given by momentum of the photon is given by now any particle will have momentum remember that that's one of the characteristic a trait of a particle so photon being a particle of light it should also have momentum then you will think can i write the momentum of a photon can i write the momentum of a photon as mass mass into velocity yes or no just put it in the chat box uh, do you have to write notes ajit gaming very good question bachcha If you want, you can make running notes, but don't copy everything because I am going to give this to you on Telegram channel. So don't worry. All my handwritten print will also come in the Telegram. Some of you are saying yes. Sara saying no. Sandhya saying no. Kanan saying no mass. Very good. Prem also saying no mass. Very good. The answer is no, bacha log. You cannot use this. Where is the mass? Mass is zero. How can you use this? You will get momentum as zero. That is a crazy thing. then experiments were done and it was actually found that the momentum that the momentum of a photon the momentum of a photon is given by h by the wavelength the wavelength of the light uh, is den denominator h is planck's constant that gives you the momentum of the photon very crucial formula now if you want you can also rearrange this a little bit like multiply it with speed of light multiply it with speed of light and because you have multiplied divide it also with speed of light cc cancels and you will get the same thing wait a minute what is hc by lambda what is hc by lambda i just gave it to you hc by lambda is energy of the photon so hence it will be nothing but energy of that particular photon energy of that photon by c this is also another way of writing the momentum of the photon i hope this is clear Ajit, I think I just answered it, bacha. Just rewind back. I have answered it. Okay, Telegram channel name is there in the description box. In case it is not there, after the lecture I will add it. Okay, I'll just ask the team to add it. In case it is not there, but it should be there. Okay, everybody fine with this? Great. Let's do some questions based on whatever you have studied. Particle-like behavior of light arises from the fact that each quanta of light has some definite dash. and a fixed value of dash just like a particle here x and y refer to the particle of light meaning photon the uh, uh, you know arises from the fact that each quanta that is each packet has some fixed dash and definite dash what are those blanks come on my warriors yes kansita momentum is uh, basically h by lambda and i have just uh, you know Uh, written down the derivation you can even rewind a little bit even in a live class you can go back a little bit and replay the same part even at 1x 2x 3x speed okay i think those options will be there okay some of you are saying d many of you rather are saying d very few are saying c option okay very good mini boy glad it is there in the description box please join the telegram channel to get the notes the correct answer is energy and momentum it's not energy frequency angular momentum energy shape volume no 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 
it is not frequency it is energy and momentum every packet has a fixed momentum and fixed energy every packet has a fixed momentum and fixed energy from that they understood oh these energies and these momentum depends on the wavelength and these wavelengths depend on the frequency yeah the frequency is the same agree but they first understood that each packet has a fixed energy and a fixed momentum that's what led them to believe that oh it has particle like behavior because frequency although it is the same for a packet frequency is not a, a particle characteristic frequency is a wave characteristic so a lot of people think it is c because for a packet frequency is also fixed but remember if frequency is not a particle behavior frequency is not a particle behavior hence option c will not be correct d will be correct Yes, frequency is for wave. Very good, Gokul. If the wavelength of photon is doubled, then the energy and the momentum will be both halved, both are doubled. This is halved, that is doubled, that is doubled, this is halved. Come on, figure this out. I hope, Reena, Reena, this is clear. Why it is not frequency? Prem Kumar, I hope you understood. Very good questions you guys are asking. I'm very proud of you guys. Perfect. If you guys are asking why it is not seen, that means you are thinking, sir, frequency also was same, then why is it not true? So now you understood. Frequency is a wave characteristic, not a particle characteristic. Very good, guys. Keep it up. Can we say that for a packet of photon, momentum and energy are constant? Yes, exactly, Harish. Exactly. It has a definite and a fixed energy and momentum. Exactly. Yes, Harish. Okay. So, guys, let's see how many of you can... Uh, Yes, yes, if you just watch my lecture alone uh, for these topics, that is more than sufficient, Siva. I'll be doing problem solving sessions separately. That will be more than sufficient. Okay, both double. Most of you are saying both double. Some of you are saying doubled and halved. The correct answer is both halved, guys. Oh my God, what just happened? What just happened? Let us have a look. Guys, the energy and the momentum. So let's talk about energy. Energy formula is HC by lambda. If you talk about momentum, if you talk about momentum, momentum is h by lambda, correct? Now, it is clearly mentioned the wavelength is doubled. Read the question carefully. The photon's wavelength is doubled. If the wavelength is doubled, lambda will become two times. So, this ratio, this whole thing, how many times will it become? Half times, na? Momentum will become half times. If lambda is in the denominator, it becomes double, then this ratio or LHS will become half time. If this was on the top, then this would also become two times. Here also, if this becomes two times, obviously this becomes half times because wavelength is in the denominator. Inversely proportional. Understood? Everybody made a mistake. Tell me, is it a difficult question? Honestly, tell me. Honestly, tell me, no, right? It was not difficult. These kind of questions will come in neat exam. Yes. And you might lose marks. So that's why you should attend these classes. I don't want you to lose marks. Very direct questions will come. And yesterday I have given you the ratio of easy, medium and hard questions. This will come in that 30%, 40% category of easy questions. Okay? Great. Let's move on to the next one. Now, radiation pressure and uh, radiation forces for different materials radiation what is the meaning of radiation guys yes very good yes very good siva you remember those percentages that means you have paid attention to the strategy very good so very important that you know the strategies radiation is basically light or basically electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic waves when light falls on you do you feel force like, oh my God, it's like water falling on your face. Like when you stand under a waterfall, doesn't the water hit you? Haven't you got hit by water when you stand inside a waterfall or just a shower? The water hits your face. Or you might have seen dentist using a jet spray. Using the jet spray to clear your or clean your teeth. Have you seen that? So, there water applies some force. It has some pressure. Does light also apply some pressure? The answer is yes, but you don't feel it. Reason, because it is very, 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 very small. You generally experience forces around you in newtons, 
किलोन्यूटन्स मेगा न्यूटन्स और इवन पॉइंट न्यूटन्स बट नॉट इन नैनो न्यूटन्स माइक्रो न्यूटन्स पिको न्यूटन्स दो हजार सो स्मॉल फोर्सेस दैट यू हार्डली विल फील दैट प्रेशर सो हैंस हैंस अंडरस्टैंड यू जनरली डू नॉट फील द प्रेशर ऑफ लाइट बट इट इज दैट एट एटोमिक लेवल If you talk about the small small atoms, bechara those people na they will get lot of pressure. For you it doesn't matter. You are huge. It's like you are an elephant and you are throwing water on an elephant. Nothing will happen to that elephant. But if you take a bechara small ant and you throw water on it, it will be like floods for him or tsunami for that ant. So for the atoms, that pressure also matters. I hope this is clear. So there is. pressure or there is basically force on atomic level which you can experience now why is this force or why is this pressure there simple fact if imagine this was a photon does a photon have momentum does a photon have momentum yes it does have momentum now let us say there is some kind of a surface there is some kind of a surface over here that surface can absorb it or it can reflect it there are two things that can happen whenever light falls it can get absorbed like you are wearing black clothing like this blackboard is black right so you can see the light will get absorbed onto it but if you take a mirror or a whitish object it will reflect also some of the light so hence the surface can absorb or reflect anything can happen just i'm showing you one scenario where the light falls onto it and it gets reflected so has the momentum changed come on tell me did momentum change momentum did it change yes or no momentum is a vector quantity please do not forget that momentum is a vector quantity this is your new momentum this is your new momentum of that photon which got reflected has the momentum vector changed yes definitely yes it has changed so when momentum changes what happen isn't there a force acting on it isn't there a force acting on it right remember whose law is this this is newton's second law definitely newton's laws of motion if you remember it if there is force and if you take the area of the surface the force acting per unit area the force which is acting per unit area what is that called pressure what is that called pressure so isn't there a pressure because of light that is why it is called radiation pressure understood the concept behind it everybody with me yes change in momentum is impulse impulse upon time is force correct so changes in the momentum also rate of change of momentum causes force and that force upon the area gives rise to pressure very good so this is called as radiation pressure now the formula for the radiation pressure is very very simple guys see if it is absorbing all the light gets absorbed then the intensity of the light if it is i i is basically the intensity of light intensity of light now the intensity of light is having the units of watts per meter square that means how much energy falls on that surface per unit time per unit surface area if you take 1 square meter in 1 second how much energy falls on it that is the intensity of light if the light is bright more intensity if the light is very weak dim light bedroom lamp then very less intensity very less energy is falling on that surface per unit time per unit area that is the meaning of intensity of light it depends on that intensity why because more intense the light more photons more photons means more change in momentum more force and more pressure so guys the formula for the pressure formula for the pressure okay so i'll just put it over here so formula for the pressure for the pressure radiation pressure is just i by c and the radiation radiation force the radiation force will be nothing but the radiation pressure radiation pressure multiplied by the area so that comes out to be i by c into a that's your radiation force so these are again very important formulas radiation pressure is i by c and force is i a by c 
for absorbing for absorbing no problem bless you joseph you can watch the miss part after some time great now yes this is power by area you can see energy per unit time per unit area so that's how intensity has been defined oh can i also say my dear students intensity is proportional to the number of photons number of photons falling per unit time can i say this yes or no think about it can i say intensity of light is proportional to the number of photons if more light particles come the light is very intense if very few particles come then the light is less intense yeah i can say that so i a by c for force i by c for pressure guys what if it is not absorbing what if it is reflecting what if it is reflecting can you quickly tell me what will be the changes in the formula let's see how many of you are smartly able to think what will be the new formula if the surface is a reflector not an absorber this is for absorbing surface what if it is a reflecting surface come on let's see come on guys let's see how many of you can answer this i'm waiting for all the warriors on the need english channel to answer this no it's not about the sign uh vijay and prem the re uh, reason why i'm not worried about the sign is because i'm just interested in the magnitude of the pressure so if it is a reflector it will go there and come back so the change will be twice why is it twice think carefully if it is absorbing the momentum mv or whatever is the momentum becomes zero but if it is reflecting it goes there and comes back so if it was just getting absorbed the change is zero minus p but if it gets reflected if it gets reflected final minus initial p minus minus p is 2p p minus minus p you would have done these kind of questions in 11th standard if you just go and stop change in the momentum is zero minus mv if you turn and come back change in the momentum is mv minus minus mv minus because direction is opposite so the sign will change that will make it two times hence yes you will get the answer as 2i by c and 2i a by c so two will come that's the only difference okay so if you absorb it is one times if you absorb and again then release the change is two times that's what you should understand so in case of a reflector in case of a reflector the changes the changes in momentum changes in momentum are basically twice twice as of absorbing surface twice as of absorbing surface very very crucial keep all these things in mind let's move on to the questions radiation pressure on any surface depends on let's see how many of you are able to answer this question come on quickly spam in the chat box uh but it does not obey the conservation of momentum no ash a uh, photons do obey the laws of conservation of momentum as well as energy laws of conservation of momentum and energy are universal laws there is no exception found till date so everything in this universe will obey law of conservation of momentum and also law of conservation of energy always okay ash so when photon hits an atom that momentum of the photon gets transferred to the atom and even that atom might start moving so when light falls on an atom the light also starts moving or it might get transferred to an electron the electron might get higher energy and it will jump to you know maybe higher orbits all these things can happen all right b or c the correct answer is b very good many of you answered b some of you answered c is dependent on the nature of the surface and light used because see if you talk about you know radiation pressure radiation pressure is nothing but i by c or basically 2i by c so it depends if it is absorbing or whether it is reflecting definitely is dependent on the nature of the surface it depends on the nature of the surface that means whether it is absorbing or reflecting the second point if you notice intensity of the light used definitely intensity is there over here so intensity also matters is dependent on frequency where is frequency here there is no frequency over here 
नेचर या इट इज देयर बट फ्रीक्वेंसी इज नॉट देयर सो इंटेंसिटी एंड द नेचर दैट्स ऑल गाइस डी नो डिपेंड्स ऑन नेचर ऑफ द सोर्स नो डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन द नेचर ऑफ द सोर्स इट कैन कम फ्रॉम अ लैम्प इट कैन कम फ्रॉम अ कैंडल इट कैन कम फ्रॉम अ एलईडी डजेंट मैटर लाइट इज लाइट सो इट डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन द सोर्स ओके इट डज डिपेंड ऑन द नेचर ऑफ द सर्फेस बट नॉट ऑन द सोर्स फॉर श्योर आई होप दिस इज क्लियर okay what if the surface is partially absorbing then only that much part of the intensity will be considered let's say out of that intensity half the intensity is getting absorbed half is getting reflected so in this formula you will is half the intensity for the contribution for the contribution of the pressure due to absorbing formula and the remaining half you will use it for the reflecting formula and you will add both of them So we'll take them separately. That's all. We'll take them separately. We'll take individual contributions. That's it. Okay. Fair enough. Let's move to another question. Let's see if you can solve this. Light of intensity nine watts per meter square is incident on a black surface. Then the pressure on it will be. Okay. And we'll be doing lots of problems, Sandhya and so many others. In the next few sessions, you will see that after completing one or two sessions, we'll be doing problem solving sessions on this as well. Great. Let's see how do we do this. Light's intensity is this on a black surface. Black surface means absorbing or reflecting. Black surface means absorbing or reflecting. Obviously, it is absorbing surface. So the pressure on it, the pressure on it, the formula will be just I by C. What is I? I is nine. C is three into ten to the power eight. So nine by three is three. Ten to the power eight will go on the top as minus eight. Do you see this? Newton per meter square is so so small. It's so negligible, guys. Yes, C for captain. You see that, Captain Shreyas? Yes. yes, that's my name out there. Very good. Option C is the correct answer. Very good, Pandya. Very good, Cat. Very good, JV. Very good, Jay Shakti. Prem Kumar. Very good, Crazy Fellows. Very good, Reena, Sikram, Sara, Shagun, Gokul, Akila, Surya. Very good, guys. Very good, Maha. Very good, Ashika. Excellent, guys. So it's very small. You will hardly barely feel it. 10 to the power minus 8, so small, yeah, so small. What will you feel? Nothing. Okay. Now, D Broglie. Let's go to D Broglie. He did a very interesting thing. You know what interesting thing he did? Very crazy thing he thought. He thought that light has dual nature. 100, 300 years, people thought whatever. Light is a wave. Light is a wave. Maxwell showed it. Huygens showed it. Fresnel's uh, experiments, Fraunhofer, uh, Huygen, and so many others. Young, all these people. What did they say? Light is a wave. So there was one group of scientists saying light is a wave. Then Einstein, Planck, and other people they said no, no, no. Light is a particle. Then it was again accepted. Okay, light has both behavior. So if light can show wave and particle behavior, light, which is which can show electromagnetic as well as photon type behavior. then can mass matter like proton electron neutron which we know is particle why do i know it's particle because it has mass because it has momentum because it can collide it can interact so i know it's a particle can that also show wave like behavior and to his surprise later on it was found that yes they can also show wave like behavior but what kind of wave is that No, no, no! Don't use I by two C for reflector. For reflector, it is two I by C. Be careful, Siva. Yes. If it is reflecting, you can use two I by C. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. So basically, he thought that even particles can show wave-like behavior, but those waves are not electromagnetic. Are they electromagnetic? Are they sound waves? Are they waves on a string? Are they waves on water? Are they light waves? No. What are those waves called? Okay, let's think about it. What are we talking about? Matter. Matter means proton, electron, neutron. All these are particles. Their wave. So matter wave. Oh, it's a new kind of wave. Very good, Christo. Very good. Understood. So he talked about matter waves. So let's talk about this. So when we have matter, when we have matter, example, example, proton. Electron, neutron, etc. These are particles of matter. 
These matter show dual behavior. So they have particle like behavior. They have particle like behavior, which we already know. It's nothing but momentum is mass into velocity. Their kinetic energy will be half into m into v square, which can be also written down as p square by 2m. That's the kinetic energy, correct? All these are formulas for particle like behavior. He saw they also have wave like behavior. They also have wave like behavior. So what is the formula for that wave like behavior? Simple. Do you remember the formula for momentum of light wave? Momentum of light wave in case you have forgotten, no issues. I'll show that to you. Let me just put it in some different color maybe. Alrighty, let's just use green here. So when we talk about light, when we talk about light, then it has two kinds of behavior. One is that wave behavior where C is equal to F lambda and all of that. And then it has particle behavior where the momentum is H by lambda. Momentum is H by lambda, very good, very good, very good. So he thought, why not interchange the two? Why not interchange the two? And to his surprise, it came out to be correct. So what he did was for a wave, he just brought lambda over here, P over there. So the wave nature of matter, which is then called as matter wave, which is then called as matter wave, that wavelength is H by P. That's it. Or you can just say H by mass into velocity. Here you can use it because it's a particle. So for particles, mass into velocity works. So H by P, that's what it came out to be. And this is the correct answer. If you want, you can use momentum as this formula over here. You can see right over here, if I rearrange this, if I rearrange this, P square will be 2MK. So P will be equal to root of 2MK. So you can use this value over here also if needed in the problem if needed in the problem so that is the wavelength of the matter wave so whenever a mass moves whenever a mass moves you will see it will have momentum it will have a wavelength lot of people get confused sir what is this wavelength i didn't understand sir what is the meaning of this matter wave okay see imagine imagine some mass is moving just imagine some mass imagine some mass Imagine some mass is moving with some velocity. It definitely has some momentum. It has some, uh, you know, it can create some impact. It can interfere, sorry, it can collide with something. But when I say that it has wave-like characteristics, does not mean, does not mean it moves like this. How many of you thought that matter wave means the particle actually goes like this? That is completely wrong. That is completely wrong. Can we say matter waves have mass? No, matter waves don't have mass. The particle of the matter wave has mass. The particle nature of the matter wave has mass. Matter wave is just a wave. It's just an energy, flow of energy. That's it. So a lot of you were even taught when I was studying, I was told matter wave means it goes like this. And then I was like, oh, then the teacher explained me also this because H value is very, very small. What is the value of H? 10 to the power minus 34. So that's why the wavelength is also very small, 10 to the power minus 34 meter. So the wavelength is so small, you cannot see it. I was like, oh, right, we cannot see it. Then later on, I understood that is not the case. There is more complex theory to it. So the matter waves can't be seen like that. There are experiments to see the matter waves or to feel or to detect those matter waves. You need dark room setup. You need crazy amount of accurate instruments to detect these matter waves. So that's a whole different ball game. But understand matter wave is something which you cannot feel around you because those are waves. Those are wave nature of matter. When you see a matter hitting you, that's the particle behavior which is contacting you. It's a particle behavior, not the wave behavior. Wave behavior is completely different. Okay, clear? Yes, is this valid for only moving particles? Yes. When you have a particle at rest, will it have a matter wavelength, yes or no? Will it have a matter wavelength, yes or no? Very good questions you guys are asking. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Very, very smart students you are. So I'm wondering, why did you say and how you guys are getting such less marks when you put up in the polls? I feel that you guys deserve 150 marks, guys. Like, I felt very sad when many of you said, Sir, I'm getting less than 100 marks. 83, 84% of the students said, Sir, we are getting less than 100 marks in neat physics out of 180. I was so sad because of that. I felt that, no, these students, I don't think they are, you know, average or below average. I think they are smart, just that they don't know what to study, how to study. 
so that's why i'm here guys yes so when a particle is at rest there is no wavelength there is no matter wave very good excellent so let's see if you can solve some questions matter wave is associated with matter when it is okay oh i think i'll leave the answer maybe <laughs> Can 2024 students also watch it? Definitely, Sarah, why not? Please watch it. Yes, Resmi, my kids. <laughs> my kids are going to do wonders now, isn't it? Okay, I hope you guys are subscribed to the channel, especially the new timers out here on Neat English channel. Make sure you subscribe. Yep, that's very important. So that you do not miss any of the classes. And also, go ahead, smash the like button in case you haven't done that yet. What are you guys doing? If you got 140 in the previous mock test of physics in Vedantu, that's very good, Siva. Very good. I'm pretty sure you will reach 160 also in days to come. Many people are confused between C and B. A, definitely not Sandhya. Think about it. I just told. When it is at rest, how is there a matter wave? No, right? So, think like this, my dear students. Matter wave is associated with matter. So, lambda is H by P. So, when P is not zero, lambda is also not zero so when it is in motion with the velocity of light only wrong when it is in motion with any velocity correct why light why light what has light got to do with anything nothing so it need not move with the speed of light even if it moves with three meters per second five centimeters per second hundred kilometers per hour any velocity it's okay all right so hence the answer is c Matter waves can undergo interference? Yes, Kailash, because it's a wave. So waves can undergo all those things what any light or sound wave can do. Constructive interference, destructive interference, diffraction, refraction, all those things it can undergo, guys. All those are wave-like characteristics. Should move, that's it, exactly. Let's see if we can solve this. Alpha particle and proton. Alpha particle means helium, which is ionized. Okay. Proton are act, not accepted, accelerated, are accelerated, are accelerated from rest by a potential difference of 200 volts. By a potential difference of 200 volts. After this, the de Broglie wavelengths are lambda alpha, lambda p. What is their ratio? So when these particles accelerate, what will happen? They will gain momentum. And when they have momentum, what will happen? They will have wavelength. So question is, what is the ratio of the wavelength, guys? That's the question. Let's see if you can solve this. So first of all, let's see if I know the formula for wavelength. The wavelength formula in general is H by momentum. Just some time back, just some time back, I just showed you momentum is root of 2 mk. Do you remember this? If you have forgotten, let me take you back. Momentum is root 2 mk. I just showed you this over here. If you want, I'll block all these results. These are, these are very standard. This is very important over here. Okay, so I can say over here, I can say over here that since momentum is root 2 mk, I can also say that this is the kinetic energy which it has got because of acceleration. When you accelerate a charge, the kinetic energy that it gets, the kinetic energy that it gets is always the charge multiplied by the potential difference. This is standard formula from electrostatics. If you take one coulomb of charge and accelerate it by one volt, then the energy that it gains is one joule. Do you remember this was also the definition of volt? One volt is one joule per coulomb. Or when you take one coulomb of charge and accelerate it by one volt, the energy that it gets is one joule. Remember it? Uh, remember it guys, this was the definition of volt also. So this will then become root of 2 m q into delta v. So if that is p, therefore the wavelength will be h by root of 2 m q delta v. h is a constant, 2 is a constant, mass is different, q is also different. These are the only two different things. Who are the different things? Mass and charge. So wavelength is also different, voltage is the same. So can I not say lambda is inversely proportional to root of mass and also proportional to root of charge, root of mass and root of charge. So lambda of alpha by lambda of, what is it, proton will be, take inverse ratio. Here I will have, <clears throat> here I will have mass of alpha and mass of proton on the top. Here I will have, uh, charge of alpha and charge on 
proton on the top over here okay so mass of proton and mass of alpha guys this ratio is 1 by 4 because alpha particles has two protons two neutrons proton is just one proton so there are four particles here there is one particle here over here proton what charge does it have one e what is the charge of alpha particle 2e so e e anyways gets cancelled so i'll be left with 1 by 2 and here 1 by root 2 that is lambda alpha by lambda proton so lambda proton by lambda alpha will be 2 root 2 root 2 is nothing but 1.4 so it will be 2.8 so it will be 2.8 that is the answer let's see where is it option number b very good many of you said b very good root 4 into 2 very good rashmi angeline very good jay sakti very good nh shiva sankar very good target very good very good saida very good uh, excellent everyone very nice very nice very nice excellent got it understood so this was a good problem on your de broglie wavelength and acceleration these kind of questions are very common in neat examination let me tell you that let's do the next part and that is photoelectric effect and i have some wonderful animations to make you visualize photoelectric effect so guys today is the time where you're going to actually visualize the photoelectric effect ready for it sir how there is charge into potential difference satya so the logic for that see let me remi remind you one volt okay is nothing but one joule upon one coulomb one joule is one coulomb into one volt okay that's how it works so the energy that the particle gets is basically how much charge you take into how much potential difference you accelerate it with hence that kinetic energy which the charge gets is the charge into the potential difference this is the formula for that is there an electrostatics so it's a previous topic so i was assuming you knew it anyways i'm telling this to you right now okay how one by four came sikarama proton what is the mass of a proton what is the mass of a proton just assume it as something now just assume it as something let's say m so what will the mass of alpha particle two protons two neutrons proton neutron roughly same mass so it will be 4m now mm will get cancelled so 1 by 4 everybody got it okay i hope this is clear 1 by root 2 why is it 1 by root 2 root of 1 by 2 na bachcha root of 1 by 2 what is root of 1 by 2 yes so root of 1 by 4 what is root of 1 by 4 it's 1 by root 4 1 by root 4 is 2 1 by uh, root 2 will just come over here because this is root of 1 by 2 right because i can just write this as 1 by root 4 into 1 by root 2 root 4 is 2 root 2 is root 2 that's it so then i flip it i just flip it so 2 root 2 goes on the top and that's what the value you get okay i hope this is clear good evening kumaran thank you so much okay so mari Maria SK, please watch all my lectures. You have to watch all my lectures. That's the only way you can improve physics. It will not happen in one day. You have to make a promise that you will attend all the classes. Okay? Neutron or outside the nucleus or inside? Neutron is inside the nucleus. Nuclear particle, nu neutron is there inside the nucleus. Okay? Fair enough. Let's go on to now the next part. Let's go to the next part. Everybody excited? Light up the chat box, guys. Come on. Light up the chat box. Everybody with me. Clear says Vijay. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> okay. I hope everybody is getting everything that I have talked till now. And wherever you found any kind of difficulty, we're just going to replay that part. Very good. Keep it up. And get all your batchmates. Because see, when you have your friends also know over here, you will not only help those friends but you will also also do a good deed because that's one of the first quality of doctor so studying physics chemistry biology is number one okay but to become a doctor the first thing that you should have is compassion that attitude to help because that's what you're going to do you're going to serve do service to the society you are going to be uh, looked upon within few years you will be treated like god probably you know so many of your friends probably so many of the elders probably your teachers they will come to you looking for you know medicines or treatment or maybe some kind of advice or help 
so you guys are going to be looked upon in few years so that mindset has to build up and i'm pretty sure you agree with that and if you agree go ahead smash the like button guys yes so let's start with photoelectric effect now photoelectric photoelectric photo means light you take a photo light okay electric effect electrons are coming because of light electrons are coming Achha. so that is photoelectric effect now you can see that thing happening right over here can you see this is photons this is light light falls on a surface electrons come out photoelectric effect but then to bring these electrons out to bring these electrons out is not so easy you have to do something you have to do something you require to pull them out okay you have to pull them out so you require some energy so at least some energy is required so when light of high frequency why high frequency think about it why this sufficiently high frequency is asked because energy of a photon energy of a photon is hf more the frequency more the energy then only it can pluck out it can pick that electron and throw it out that's when the photoelectric effect occurs these electrons that come out these electrons that come out are called as photoelectrons these are called photoelectrons the one which is falling onto it that is nothing but photons that is nothing but photons or basically light light falls on a surface electrons are ejected those are called as photo electrons as simple as that very nice i have a beautiful simulation as well oh my god here i am teaching very nice guys uh, guys go ahead smash this but effort like button this has to go above at least 200 what is this okay now i'm going to show you this simulation as well where there will be a battery there will be a surface there will be a tube there will be light falling i can change the color of light as well okay yes i can change the color of light as well hopefully yes and i can also change the intensity of light as well so i'm going to do all these things and we're going to see what is going to exactly happen there are also some graphs which we are going to study over here very very interesting setup guys okay so let's go to that in a bit but for now let's understand this photoelectric effect setup in this setup you have a tube what do you have a tube it should be vacuum tube why do you want vacuum tube why not any just take a surface and just make light fall on it the problem is when these electrons come out now they will collide with the air molecules nitrogen hydrogen oxygen and when they hit them they might produce undesirable effects so you don't want all that headache so that's why you use a vacuum tube clear okay next you use a metallic surface now you're like why do i use a metallic surface why not rubber why not wood so this is how you have to think guys how you read experiments correct me if i'm wrong oh there is vacuum tube ha oh, there is metallic plate okay there is light falling there is a window okay there is a uh, is connected to the battery no no that is not how you study you have to think why this why that then you will learn and then you will not forget because you have convinced yourself so convincing is also an art and convincing yourself is a even bigger art so why metallic surface guys why metallic surface electron rich in fact the electrons are readily available it's not just rich with electrons it is also readily available because conductors metals are having free electrons so they can be plucked out easily imagine you have to pluck out some seeds or some fruit from a uh, you know farm if the fruits can be easily taken you will be very happy if it is somewhere inside the ground like a potato then you will be like oh my god i have to dig that mud then i have to take out that potato leave it i just don't want it okay instead if the if the fruit is just hanging you'll be like ha i'll just pluck it very easily so same thing happens in case of metals it's it's easily pluckable you can easily take it out okay that's why metallic surface why this window so that light can fall okay why this circuit what is all this nonsense battery oh my god voltmeter ammeter so many things are there why all this okay one by one what will the job of the voltmeter be to see what is the voltage which is created correct between these two terminals it will measure the voltage and we'll see some interesting things what is the job of the ammeter acha these electrons which are ejected out the photoelectrons they will be collected over here they will be collected over here at the collector this will be the emitter this will be the collector this will be the emitter this will be the collector the collector plate will collect all these electrons what will they do collecting will it just keep collecting and keep it in a basket no right 
it will flow where will it flow in the circuit so the electrons will flow it's not that it's not that you are plucking out the electrons and then it is like oh my god i'm so sorry now electrons are not there sorry bye 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 light i can't give you more electrons no it doesn't say that why because these electrons travel through the circuit and come back these travel through the circuit and again come back so it's like somebody is you know feeding onto it uh, continuously so there is a current which is set up there is a voltage which is set up and then what is the job of this battery what is the job of this battery the battery is there to assist it or to oppose it why assist and why oppose will come to it in a bit but you can help the current so if you connect the battery in the proper way then you will see it will help in the current so current will increase if you connect it opposite na uh, then the current will decrease so how you connect the battery also matters guys whether you are helping it so when you help it it is called as forward bias when you help it it is called as forward bias when you reverse it to slow the current when you reverse it to slow the current it is called reverse bias everybody clear with the setup of photoelectric experiment everybody clear everybody is sure of each and every part over here something like a semiconductor it's not a semiconductor but yes it is not a semiconductor but this is how it works very nice excellent madhumita rashmi prem ashika seva miki very good sara very good vijay very good excellent target now let's do some question just to warm you up this is basically a fact based question it's there in ncert it's there in your hc verma and any standard textbook this photoelectric effect is a really fast really fast phenomena how fast is it so when the photon falls on to the metallic surface the electron gets ejected out how quickly is that electron ejected out does anybody know can you uh, can you tell me this come on guys bhandra what should i explain bachcha yes option c you can always replay uh, replay bhandra so what you going to do is just slide the slider below and just replay the part whichever you want help with again okay great there is almost no time lag it's not in seconds it's in nanoseconds the tata nano car right nanoseconds so tend the power minus 9 seconds hardly any time exactly tend to the power minus 9 very 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 small within a blink of our eye that's it there will be thousands millions of electrons which will be coming out of it yes now we'll be coming to the setup the experimental setup so guys bhadra understand that in this setup light is falling from here it's falling on the metallic surface just like it was falling over here the electrons are ejected out they are collected these electrons flow through the circuit come back over here the light keeps falling the electrons keep flowing and there is current setup you can measure the voltage the battery helps or it basically lowers the current depending on how you have connected the battery that's all that's the setup as simple as that okay is that fine what is the time lag the time lag is basically uh, the time difference like when it hits till the time it comes out light falls and then the electron comes out there is a lag so how much difference of time is there so when it starts hitting the surface till the time it comes out the lag is 1 nanosecond or less okay i hope this is clear now now the next thing is next thing is the threshold frequency and associated concept that is work function let's talk about this what is this threshold frequency remember just some time back i was telling you you need high energy high frequency photons only then photoelectric effect occurs why is that so the reason is when look at this guys when you talk about the energy of a photon when the energy of a photon is equal to hf if imagine the frequency reduces the energy of the photon will reduce if the energy is not enough to pluck it out so when a fruit is hanging on the tree you need some effort to pluck it right if you are like sir i am so weak even if somebody touches me no i will faint sir then sit man aram se you take rest you need some amount of energy you need to climb up the tree little bit and maybe you just need to stretch your arms pluck it apply some force only then the fruit will come in your hand right correct so same we need at least some bit of effort to pluck that electron out 
otherwise it will not be able to come outside that surface so then that minimum energy of that particular photon for which the photoelectric effect just begins below that nothing above that yes so that is the critical least value of the energy of the photon then that frequency is basically called as your threshold frequency so the electron emission takes place when the frequency of the light is above a certain critical value that critical value is f naught that critical value is called as the threshold frequency of that surface of that particular surface this is that minimum energy you can also write it as hc by lambda naught can you guys guess can you guys guess what is this lambda naught called obviously this will be called as the threshold wavelength this will be called threshold wavelength of course is that clear my dear students yes so photoelectric effect occurs when frequency is more than f naught then it occurs if by chance by chance f is less than f naught then it doesn't occur you can see over here light is falling still nothing is coming out because that energy of the photon is not enough to pluck it out hence no photoelectric effect will occur in this case here photoelectric effect occurs because f is more than f naught the critical frequency everybody clear excellent very nice so this is something again which you should know obviously so i'm just going to highlight this block this results and i'm going to keep it over here now that minimum energy of the photon which is required to pluck it out obviously depends on the metal just like mango fruit might be very difficult to pluck maybe bananas might be more difficult same way when you pluck that electron from copper it might be difficult from aluminum it might be very very difficult from maybe gold it might be very easy so it depends on the material so every metal will have a different threshold agree or disagree because it might be difficult or easy depending on how the metal is how the atoms are how many electrons are there where is it stuck how well the forces are how is it binded to the atom so many things but it depends on the material so hence i have mentioned that it depends on that metal read this line carefully it is a characteristic of that metal it depends on the metal different metals have different critical frequency so that energy is called as the uh, work function and the symbol for that work function the symbol for that work function is phi so phi is that minimum energy of that particular photon required to pluck it out so it is hf not so phi is basically hf not as the minimum energy required to pluck it out that's the minimum quantity of energy and it is obviously dependent on the metal depends on the metal depends on the metal and let's try this out let's try this out look over here look over here okay so i have some decent intensity of light okay can you see right now let me make this as 0 volts okay ha huh, little difficult okay this is 0 volts can you see light falling onto it and electrons coming out light falls do you see electrons are coming out so is photoelectric effect happening over here yes great it is happening but do you see all the electrons are not moving with the same speed why is it so do you see some electrons are moving really fast some electrons are slow some are very slow why is that can you guys think what is the reason for that the reason for that is not all electrons are lucky when these electrons get plucked out when they are taken out you know some of them will collide with each other some of them will be stuck somewhere you know because of that they might lose some energy so because of that you know some energies are lower some electrons are with higher speed some electrons which are not so lucky they might hit each other they might collide with each other they might get stuck somewhere because of that they lose some energy but there are some lucky ones very lucky so those people will go with very high speed so there is a range of speeds do you see that 
there is a range of speeds over here very nice next thing i will change now the color if i make it from violet to red if i make it from violet to red will the wavelength increase or wavelength decrease answer in the chat box quickly like afternoon traffic yes so will the wavelength increase or decrease if i shift from violet to red come on my warriors red long wavelength violet short wavelength correct so longer so will the energy of the photon increase or decrease will the frequency increase or decrease think about it obviously if the wavelength increases if i shift from here frequency will come down energy will come down so the chances of these electrons coming out will also reduce now the chances of these electrons coming out will also decrease correct because when the wavelength increases frequency energy everything will go down so as wavelength goes up frequency and energy comes down let's try this out i'm just going to shift it over here i made it blue okay i'll make it green oh my god guys there is no effect photoelectric effect stopped what does it mean somewhere in between i have threshold wavelength or threshold frequency somewhere over here ah see over here photoelectric elect electric effect started photoelectric effect has started do you see that guys photoelectric effect has started i can just try out some different wavelength okay still it is going on if i make it slightly more slightly more maybe it stops yes there you go somewhere in that green zone it has stopped great if i change the metal from sodium from sodium to i don't know maybe calcium or something or maybe i don't know copper okay let's try for copper it's still not working so i need to change the wavelength and see uh, it's still not working still not working oh my god still not working still not giving any photoelectric effect still not giving anything still not giving anything oh my goodness oh there it started so for copper you can see it needs very high energy so it depends from metal to metal so the threshold wavelength or frequency depends from metal to metal my dear students did you see that i just changed the material over here i have the option i can choose the option for sodium it came out to be somewhere in that green color so each metal has different so you can try this out later on i will share you the link so don't make me try all these things sir show it for this show it for that yeah we can do that but i want to move ahead okay you get the idea that's all i want you to get the concept over here great so you got the idea of work function and all of that now what is the effect of you know what is the effect of different colors on the on the electron which is coming out understand when you go from red to violet red has red has long wavelength so frequency is very less or energy is also less but when you go to violet from red orange yellow green blue violet then for violet wavelength is less frequency is more energy is also more because of that what happens if you are using longer wavelengths or shorter energy the chances of electron coming out are also less but if you use higher energy or short wavelength then the chances of electrons coming out are not obviously more but also the electrons coming out are of higher energy because you are giving only more energy the electrons will also come out with higher energy so obviously the kinetic energy of the electron depends on the frequency of the light do you guys agree or disagree do you guys agree or disagree everybody with me on this so as you increase the frequency of the photons obviously the electrons energy will also increase okay i hope this is clear and this can be also seen over here so if i choose light of higher frequency you can see look at this electrons suddenly coming out of higher energy higher energy electrons are coming because this wavelength is small or frequency is higher but the moment i reduce the wavelength the moment i reduce the sorry increase the wavelength or reduce the frequency the electrons do not have so much of energy you can see that very very clearly okay right over here so maybe we can solve some questions based on this coming up on your screen all right sodium and copper have work functions 2.3 and 4.6 the ratio of the wavelength is approximately i want everybody to spam the answers in the chat box i'm so glad harshini amrasu i'm so glad and this is how the classes will be sir if we speak about threshold wavelength it's the maximum range unlike threshold frequency which is the minimum range yes it's the maximum yes so because wavelength and frequency are inversely related so for frequency if it is minimum frequency after which it starts 
for wavelength it will be a maximum wavelength you know uh, for until which you know you will get uh, what do you say uh, photoelectric effect yes kinetic energy is the promotion to the frequency yes a lot of you are saying a let's figure out if the answer is a no the answer is b guys let's see what mistake you made maybe you made that ratio uh, opposite anyways the ratio of the wavelength is approximately we all know work function is hf naught so it is h c by lambda naught or rather work function is inversely proportional to the wavelength so hence lambda 1 by lambda 2 will be 5 2 by 5 1 5 2 is 4.6 5 1 is 2.3 so hence it is 2 is to 1 order is very important this will be considered for 1 this will be considered for 2 order is important so be careful guys yes so a lot of you got 1 is to 2 i think you wrote 2.3 on the top and 4.6 below that's all very nice inversely related exactly hello sivagami welcome bachalo next concept stopping potential now you'll be like what the hell is this stopping potential okay i'll tell you see simple guys there is one plate over here there is another plate over here correct light is falling onto this plate this is your light this is your light so because of that your electrons electrons are getting ejected out now answer the following electrons are coming out of it like this all electrons do not have the same speed some have very large speed some have very small speed so all kinds of electrons are there if by chance if by chance i make this terminal positive and this terminal negative what do you think will happen if i make this plate positive and this plate negative what will happen guys will these electrons get accelerated or will they get decelerated answer in the chat box Sivami, my name is captain Strayas. you can see that right over here captain Strayas. yeah okay what do you think will happen come on answer in the chat box think logically this plate is connected to the positive side of the battery just think about it this side is connected to the positive side of the battery and this side is connected to the negative side what do you think will happen guys accelerated think again think again sure this is positive this is negative sure Paka. Deva says decelerated <laughs> all right well the correct answer is obviously accelerated guys positive will attract the electron electron is a negative charge now you guys forgot yeah electron is a negative charge negative and positive will attract negative and negative will repel so it will get accelerated definitely it will accelerate it will accelerate so even the weak electrons will go very fast weak electrons will go fast so what do you think will happen because of this what do you think will happen because of this when more electrons flow what do you think will happen will there be more current or less current will there be more current or less current no this is not reverse bias this is forward bias guys this is basically then forward bias forward bias so because of that there will be more current agree or disagree there will be more current in this exactly now the reverse of this now the reverse of this i take the same plates i take the same plates again the same light is falling the same light is falling onto the surface again these electrons are coming out like this each electron might have different different speeds like we have discussed before these are all electrons so now if i connect this to positive this to negative obviously negative will decelerate it the electron electron uh, negative charges will decelerate positive will pull the electrons backwards so obviously it will get decelerated decelerated and if it is decelerated it is called as reverse bias it is reverse bias agree very nice i will teach 11th portions also sharmila very soon okay very nice now now i want you to focus okay if it's getting decelerated then bechara these electrons which are going with so much josh just like you guys you also have high josh you are going with so much energy somebody comes and demotivates you some relative comes or some random person comes and tells hey what is this you cannot study man go to hell okay scolds you left right center you will be like yo what is this guy saying okay forget it i will not study only same way reverse bias decelerated demotivated gone even those 
Electrons which were with high energy, they will get demotivated. They will not reach only the other side. So the current will reduce. So there will be obviously less current here. There will be less current here. And what will happen if you increase the voltage? If you increase the voltage, if you make it more negative, it will be further decelerated, further reverse bias, further less current until it becomes zero. Until it becomes zero. Prem Kumar Shiva agrees with me. Yes, demotivation faced in real life. So, until it becomes zero, it's like stop. That's it. Enough, done. I'm going to throw my books and I'm not going to study at all. So, there is no current which is flowing after a point. So, what have you done? You have stopped the current. So, if, if, if the reverse voltage, reverse bias is increased, is increased, then what will happen? It is decelerated further. It is decelerated further. There is less current till it becomes zero. It completely stops. So that reverse voltage is called as stopping, stopping potential. What is it called? Stopping potential. Everybody clear with this? The symbol for that is Vs. You have stopped it. That voltage which is required to stop it is called stopping potential, guys. Excellent. Now, what have you done in stopping potential is you have absorbed all the kinetic energy. So all the kinetic energy, all the kinetic energy is getting absorbed. Each charge is nothing but E. Each electron charge is E. The stopping potential is Vs. So the kinetic energy is EVs. This is that maximum kinetic energy which gets absorbed when you just stop it. So it's like you're stopping it. So charge into voltage is energy. Remember, I just told you this. Forgot. I just told you over here. Where did it go? Somewhere back. Somewhere over here. Charge into voltage is energy. Exactly the same formula is used over here. All right. Exactly the same thing is used over here. Yep. So charge into voltage is the kinetic energy. This is the formula for the stopping potential. Yes, yes, the place which you illuminate is then called as the cathode. Yes, Siva. Okay, now, now, if you have understood it till here, tell me what will happen if you use forward bias and keep on increasing the forward voltage. Like, sir, that is good. More current will come. And you're like, sir, I will use even more voltage. Very good. Even more current will come. Sir, what if I keep on increasing that voltage? There comes a problem. There comes a problem. You know what problem? There will be not enough electrons to reach there. There will be a saturation. See, a teacher can motivate. Teacher can motivate. Teacher can motivate. Okay? But after a point, you will also reach saturation. How much can I further motivate? That's it. Your performance will peak. Correct? So same way, if you are given forward voltage, the current will also increase, but there will be a saturation. So if in forward bias, for some reason, if, if the voltage, if the voltage is increased is increased then what will happen forward bias is increasing acceleration will increase more current but till it reaches till it reaches some kind of a saturation till it reaches some kind of a saturation don't believe me okay i will show it to you i will show it to you right over here let's take something like okay sodium only let's say for example all right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply forward voltage and we'll see the current versus battery voltage graph. I hope you guys can see this. This is current versus battery voltage ka graph. Do you see there is some current right now? Some small current is there. Some small current 0 0.067 amperes current is there over here. Zero voltage is there. This side is forward. This side, you see the negative values. I know it is little small guys, but believe me, these are negative values. These are positive values. Don't know, don't have to know the exact values. Just look at the nature of the graph. I will increase the voltage. See where that red dot shifts. I'll increase the voltage. See what is happening. See what is happening. More electrons are going. More electrons are going and it goes till here. Okay. Almost it has reached saturation. Hardly anything is happening over here. Okay. Great. So current has increased. I know the graph is not so uh, accurate or it is not going slightly up. Actually, it should have gone up. But nevertheless, okay, you can see over here more electron speed is there. More electron speed is there. If I reduce the voltage, then you can see 
the electrons are not going in so much amount so the current is not as much okay what will happen if i reverse it what will happen if i reverse it look at this oh my god see they are coming back oh it stopped it stopped do you see the graph how it looks do you see how the graph it looks it stopped over here so you can see after a certain point the electrons are not even able to reach there it goes till there and just just stops and comes back maybe over here see the when i apply negative voltage you can see it is just coming back it's stopping it so this is how it works this is how it works now you will be like sir what if i increase the intensity fine increase the intensity let's say i increase the intensity it does not matter the stopping voltage does not depend on the intensity just when you increase the intensity more electrons will come more electrons will come because more intense light is there but it does not change the amount of energy of each electron just because i increase the intensity you can see more number of electrons are coming out that's it but it has not changed the energy of any electron because energy depends on the wavelength or frequency so even if the intensity is less doesn't really matter so stopping voltage will depend only stopping voltage all right it depends on the nature of material and the frequency and other things but not on the intensity then you will be like sir what does intensity actually do fine let's say i make it forward voltage or something like this if i make the light more intense now it's just that more current will flow that's all see if i increase the intensity more current will flow over here that's all that's all i hope this is clear is that understood so you can see current versus probably light intensity you can see that graph so if i change the intensity you can see as i oh yeah as i reduce the intensity the current also reduces as i increase the intensity of light as i increase the intensity of light the current also increases that's a beautiful graph right over here what a beautiful way to study this guys okay so i have kept the animation also over here for both forward bias as well as reverse bias it's there in the pdf as well it will be available to you and this is the graph that exactly what we are looking for you can see our graph also looked almost like this almost like this so when there was nothing applied there was some current as you increase the forward voltage this was forward bias then you saw the current slightly increased and reached saturation you can see it is saturated over here saturation is reached over here if you apply reverse voltage if you apply reverse voltage then you can see the current reduces till it stops till it becomes zero if you increase the intensity current increases but stopping voltage does not increase so you can see this is of different intensities it doesn't matter how high the intensity is stopping voltage does not change it's just that the current is proportional to intensity current is directly proportional to intensity intensity so if you draw current and intensity graph it will be like this it will be like this cool let's go to the final aspect of this particular session saturation point once more okay i'll just tell you why the saturation happens the saturation happens because the saturation happens because why does the saturation happen that's because all the photo electrons reach the other side reach the other side so further further increase in voltage doesn't doesn't uh, result in result in more electrons hence there is no change in current so all the electrons which were being you know ejected out all of them are reaching there that's it even the weakest one is able to reach there there is no further increase in the electrons that's why there is no change in the current that's all but the moment you increase the intensity then more photons fall more photons fall more electrons come out hence more is the saturation current so the current increases when you increase the intensity of light i hope this is clear siva clear 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 says vijay amazing go yes yes sarmila srikram i will be doing 11 topics i will be doing 12 topics majorly now 11th also i will do the major topics once and then we will do the remaining ones don't worry yes sarmila srikram yep bachcha log yep so 
feel the electrons. See guys, I hope this simulation has created that feel in all of you. So when you increase this forward voltage, these electrons get accelerated. When you make it opposite, these electrons, even the most energetic electron, Bechara is not able to go there. That's what is happening. So if you feel it, that's it. And when I decrease the intensity, it's just that the light number of photons is reducing, electrons also is reducing, that's all. Just feel the situation. Very good. Now, Einstein, last equation guys. The last equation and this is very important because there will be problems on this. It's obviously there in chemistry as well. So, Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the photoelectric equation. It's a very simple equation. You will be like, sir, for this he won Nobel Prize? Really? I thought it was for relativity. Actually, he did not win it for relativity. He won it for uh, the photoelectric effect. And this equation is completely based on energy conservation, nothing else. So, what is this equation? Let's have a look at it. Just think of energy, guys. Light falls. Replay everything. You should probably be able to close your eyes and be able to feel what is happening in photoelectric effect. Light falls, electron is plucked out, you need something and the electron is ejected out. Correct? This is the process. So can I say the energy of the photon, the energy of the photon goes into plucking that electron out. That means the work function. That means the work function and the remaining goes as the kinetic energy of the electron remaining thing goes as the kinetic energy of electron if i give 100 laddus if i give 100 gulab jamuns out of that 20 gulab jamuns you just eat it to take out the electron remaining 80 electrons sorry remaining 80 laddus or gulab jamuns is there with the electron something like that so that's all that's all yes i'm taking full Concepts Bhadra of NEAT, right? These are NEAT lectures. 99% of the concepts will be clear here, which are important from NEAT perspective. Maybe there could be one, two lines here and there, but that I leave it up to you. That will not be important so much. That's why I might be skipping one or two lines here and there, but 99% will be covered in these lecture series. So focus on that 99%, which will give you 160, 170 marks that one, two lines may not even come. Okay, great. That's all. This is the equation for which he got Nobel Prize, right? You'll be like, sir, even I could have written. I'm not even getting full marks in need. Still, I'm able to think about this. Okay, no problem, guys. So, energy of a photon is HF. Work function is phi. Kinetic energy of an electron, I can just put it as Ke over here. But I just told you, what is the work function formula? It is nothing but HF0. And kinetic energy, I just gave it to you right over here. See, kinetic energy is EVS. It's nothing but EVS. So I can just use it over here. So E times of VS. So usually we use this equation or the above equation for photoelectric equation. That's it. This is your photoelectric equation as simple as that. How, how easy it is. Nucleus will come after some time, now, after one week. Okay, first let me complete sequentially. This will come next chapter, which will it be? Think logically, atoms. After that, what chapter will come? Nucleus. Obviously, before nucleus, I will do problem solving session of which two chapters? This chapter and atomic structure. Very much uh, similar concepts are also there. Photons is there. You know, HF is there so many times. So, we'll do problem solving on that. Then comes nucleus and semiconductor. That also we'll do. Hey, no? Clear? Let's do some questions now. Photoelectron stopping potential depends on. Uh, white will not reflect all the light, bacha, but most of the light it tries to reflect. Yes, so white will reflect most of the light. That's why petroleum take the color are white to avoid uh, heat. Yes, you use basically light color. So light colors basically are good reflectors. So that's why you reflect all the heat so that it does not catch fire. Exactly. D or C. D or C, come on. Uh, Saran, I will be taking classes at least three days a week for now. And as time permits, because there are some recordings going on, as soon as those things are done, I will probably come to four or five, okay? So right now, I'll try to maintain three lectures somehow. Okay, great. 
per week. Okay, the correct answer is actually A. It is not C or D guys. Some of you said A. I was just seeing your chats. So, stopping potential depends on, just use our photoelectric equation HF is equal to HF0 plus E into Vs. Rearrange it, HF minus HF0 is equal to E into Vs. Just divide by E, so H by E into F minus H by E into F0 is equal to stopping potential. Now, if you look at these equations, you will clearly understand that frequency, frequency, yes, you can see frequency over here. Next thing, F0 decides the nature of the material. So yes, both are there for stopping potential. Intensity, not even there. Frequency alone, no. Nature alone, no. Both, both are there. Both of them. Hence option A. Not just frequency, even F0. Remember, F0 decides work function. Work function depends on the material. That's all. So guys, I have a homework question for all of you. I hope you're going to solve it. And I want everyone who has attended this session to write the answer in the comment section. That's your rule, guys. You guys made a promise, right? That you're going to attend sessions, you're going to be sincere, you want good score, you want to be zero to hero. I want you to put the answer, even if you look and solve it, it's okay, guys. But at least solve it. Solve it. Even if you look and solve, I have no issues. But at least you will read it. At least you will understand it. At least you are putting in that effort. It's okay. I want everybody to put the answers in the comment section, okay? Okay, great. So thank you for liking, thank you for being here. I hope you loved the session, loved the animations, loved the notes as well as all the things that I have given you. This was a concept building exercise. This was the theory part of the, you know, uh, uh, photons, photoelectric effect, wave particle duality. We'll be doing next time atoms. Tomorrow I'll be doing atoms at five o'clock. So be there, do not miss that class. And after that, after that, we will be doing next week the problem solving session. Okay. So thank you guys. Do not forget to smash the like button. Also hit the subscribe button. Bye bye Ms. Doctor. Bye bye Siva. Bye bye Crazy Fellow Surya. Very good. Nice to see all of you. So I can see all your attendance guys. Keep it up. Very good. Wave particle duality also done Sandhya. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you Madhumita. Bye bye. Take care. Alphas. Vijay. Crazy. Everyone. Bye bye Saida. Bye bye. Then and sees. Bye bye Miki. Bye bye Subhiksha. Take care. Take care guys. Have a great time. See you again tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Okay, I'll be there. Bye-bye. Asala Vista. Captain Shreya signing off.